So right now we're in studio with Omi, ah, uh, overcast day in Kingston. And I'm looking at this guy and I'm thinking he looks like a slim, better looking version of Neo, a cross between Neo and Maureen much. Barrett. Thank you very much. Introduce yourself. Omi, is that your real name or is that the artistic name? No, that's the artist name. Um, Omi. That was given to me by my father. No, my real name is Omar Pasley. Right. Where are you from? Because looking at you, you just have this international appeal. Um, I am originally from Clarendon, now living in Kingston. Where in Clarendon are you from? Maybin. Maybin Clarendon. Wow. You know, people always, when they think about Maypen, they just think about violence. Ah. And they say, yeah, but, but between Maypen and Spanish Town, mm. yeah, whole heap of bad yeah, things yeah. always are going out there. When you think but, about it, really, it's everywhere, you know, so it's not just Maypen, no. But you are actually a wonderful fruit that has come from the tree of Maypen. I heard two okay. songs for you. I heard Standing on All Threes and I heard Cheerleader. I, at that point, I didn't know you were Jamaican. Oh. I was just introduced to the songs, and I'm like, wow, this guy can sing. And the person who introduced me to your song said, guess what? He's Jamaican. Beautiful vocals. Were you trained to sing, or were you just born to you sing? Know, I haven't had any uh, professional training in regards to singing. You know, it's mostly, um, you know, the admiration of, of past singers and, you know, your own little bathroom singing. Singers like who? Ah, uh, well, um, I really admire uh, Nat King Cole, Michael Jackson, John Legend, um, Taurus Riley, just to name a few. You know what? People are probably saying Sparks are yeah, exaggerate. Yeah, give a piece of what the youth can do. Omi, just give them an a cappella of standing on all threes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Ready? Ready. <clears throat> Clint? Clint? Engineers in mm. studio. Okay. You got me standing on all threes. Pretty little girl in the short jeans. Right to know me for my the concrete. You make me can't sleep. Cause you got me standing on all threes. Pretty little girl in the short jeans. Right to know me for my the concrete. Whoa, you make me can't sleep. I got you. Begin for more when you... Oh my God! Oh! Folks, I have to tell you, I was going to interview Omi. Omi said, hold on, I'll be right back. Omi went through an entire wardrobe <laughs> change like he was about to hit the runway. But you know what, cheerleader, I looked on YouTube and that song came out last year and it has already racked up over half a million views. Yes. You put up the official video like about two weeks ago and it's over a hundred and odd thousand views. Yes. Wow! Wow, indeed. Wow! Oh, indeed. I am very grateful, and um, I'm very grateful to the fans as well. You know, thank you very much um, for loving my music. And uh, as I always say, I'm a big fan of my fans. So, there you go. What, what's your typical day like, Omi? Like, You're like, not somebody that I knew about before. I've never seen you out before. I didn't hear the name before. No. So when I went on YouTube, I was absolutely shocked. And hearing your vocals, I was like, wow, this is awesome. What's a day like for you? Because obviously you must be putting in some work. Yes. Um, constantly in the studio. Constantly in the studio. At least every chance I get. Because um, I believe in putting out the work. You know, put out the work and then you reap the benefit afterwards. You know, you have some um, some people want to do it backwards. It doesn't work like that. So um, I I believe in making really good music. You know, when people are paying their money for it, they they feel like you know they are paying their money for quality. So there you go. I had the the opportunity to listen to some of the songs that you're working on, mm -hmm. and I have to say they're not the typical run of the mill kind of lyrics. Where do you draw your inspiration from, or do you work with a team of writers? No, I actually. I, I'm a loner where that is concerned. I solicit my material from everyday life. You know, my experience, uh, my experiences, other people's experiences, you know, because when you, when you do that, it kind of brings variety to what you're, what you're bringing to the table, so. Well, um, you're not using the regular words, the regular coining of words. You're putting things poetic. differently. I, I mean, you know, I, I have always had a poetic view on things. 
you know, and I and I like to give people um, something to think about, you know. So if if when, when you're listening a song, you should also be educated by that song. That that is what I believe in. So um, when I'm com it, it when I'm composing my lyrics, that is that is the ingredient that I put in there. You're 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 almost uh, we're almost three quarter ways into the year. What's on the agenda for Omi for the rest of 2012, and what can we look forward to in 2013? Well, um, what my manager and I, you know, what we discussed is, is just merely promotions. You know, we want to do a lot of promotions. We want get, to get, get it out there, you know, and then, you know, take things, you know, full force next year. You know, he, my manager, trust me, he knows exactly what he's doing, you know, and I put my full trust in him. I believe in this 100%. But you're a Jamaican, you're not just making, you're not trying to box yourself in. This is what I noticed. You're not just making reggae, you're not just making dancehall. You're making music with global appeal. You're doing dubstep, you're doing house, you're doing R&B, you're doing reggae, you're doing dancehall. What's the reason for that? Um, just to appeal to the to a wider audience. You know, that's, that's really what it is, appealing to a wider audience. You know, if, if we, we have seen only but a handful of people were able to come on this earth and do that, mm -hmm. you know, and leave a, a, such a strong and positive impact on, on people, you know. Um, so that, that is basically what we want to do now in this era of music. You know, a lot of people are not, you know, people don't feel like they're getting their money's worth now, nowadays when, when they're listening to music or, or even buying records off the shelf. You know, it, it, we want to take it back to the days when people used to listen to music and say yes. Get real this, excited. This, this makes me feel good. So, one of the parallels I'm drawing between yourself and one of um, the big stars from Jamaica, Shaggy, is that mm -hmm. your song, like Shaggy's, It Wasn't Me, mm -hmm. massive airplay, massive recognition in the Pacific, in Hawaii to be specific. How did that happen? And how did you find out? <sighs> well, <laughs> the internet. The internet is, it, it, it's one of the um, medium that, you know, can get you out there, can get something from out of your bedroom, you know, out into the whole world, you know, and um, you find that everybody is on the internet nowadays, you know, the social networks, all the social networks are jam-packed with people, you know, corresponding with, you, with each other, you know, sharing new experiences and ideas. And I think this, this medium is really what contributed to, you know, getting me out there. To the, to the wider audience that we're trying to appeal to. So, How would you describe your style? Because you, 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 your, your fashion style, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking contemporary mm -hmm. with that kind of old school rat pack edge. Right. But I don't want to be the one to describe it. How would you describe your fashion style? Ah. And are you your own stylist? No, actually, um, my manager influenced a lot of that. You know, Mr. Dylan is just amazing, his idea you know, of what, uh, of what my image, he knows exactly what suits me, you know, and I, I so far I've never been in disagreement um, with, with this um, choice of style, you know. And when, we talk, when he talks about um, Mr. Dylan, he's talking about Specialist Dylan. Uh, How did you two meet? Well, it's, it's, the story is quite amazing, you know, um, the, the producers that I used to work with. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they actually brought some stuff to him, you know, to listen to some <clears throat> from some other artists, and um, they didn't they didn't actually bring anything for me, right? You know, because I was I was I, I had other engagements, right? So um, he played they played all of you know everybody else's everybody music, everybody else's records, and um, when they were leaving. They were like, oh, there's another artist, but um, he's no way, you know, doing in, in other engagements and stuff. And he was like, okay, play it. And he said, but I don't have a, a CD for him, I only have it on my phone. Mm -hmm. And they, they played the, the track for him. And he was like, yes, man. He's the and one. He does have an eye for talent, so he's that's good. One. He's the one. But, you know, it's you quite, it's, the, the experience has been pretty, you know, exciting and um, wonderful and all other other words that could possibly describe it to me great you know so 
I'm pretty grateful. All right, before you go, your philosophy, tell the, the viewers of Blazing Sparks TV what your philosophy is. This is Omi. Look out for this youth. My philosophy is do all you can while you can. There you go. Just give him a piece of acapella for exit. <laughs> when I need motivation, my one solution is my queen, cause she stays strong. Yeah, yeah. She is always in my corner, right there when I want her. Them other girls are tempting, but I'm empty when you're gone. And they say, do you need me? Do you think I'm pretty? Do I make you feel like cheating? I'm like, <laughs> not really. <laughs> Bam!